is a thank you to my sister, my sister Ricky, for those of you who haven't met her, is going to be leading us today in the instructions about kosher pickle making and in general just explaining the idea of kosher and kosher pickling. So I'm going to I introduce my sister Ricky Friedman, who Together with her husband, they direct a Chabad in Anthem, Arizona. That's just up to 17. And in addition to that, she is the head of school of the uh, elementary and high school that my children go to. She has a lot of titles. and uh, But today, her title is Pickle Maker. So again, this is Rifty Friedman. Thank you. Is it on? Yeah. Okay, who's excited to make pickles? Yeah. Raise your hand if you've ever made pickles before. So a nice amount of people. Okay, so I'm Ricky, like Lady said, I'm his older sister. <laughs> his only sister and his older sister, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so today we're gonna be making half sour pickles. You can either make pickles with vinegar or with salt. We're going to be making pickles with salt. There are half sour pickles. Who remembers like those big barrels in Manhattan, Lower East Side? Yes. Or Bubby's pickles or Nathan's? Gus? I, I don't think I've heard of that, of Gus, but those pickles, those are the ones we're making. The, what? Oh, okay. So, yeah, so the those pickles don't have vinegar in it. That's what we're going to be making today. The main ingredient is the kosher salt, of course, salt. <laughs> Does anyone know how the kosher pickle got its name? Why it's called the kosher pickle? So one of the reasons is because the main ingredient is the kosher salt. Another reason is because back in Europe and in Russia, the Jews got tired of their diet of just eating bread and potatoes. So they started experimenting and they started fermenting beets and pickles and different vegetables. And it would, they would eat it throughout the winter. When they moved to America in the late 1800s and 1900s, early 1900s, they started selling the pickles. So the Jews would sell the kosher pickles and that's how they became really famous. Remember, I don't know if any of you remember that, but they would sell it on like push carts um, in the Lower East Side. So, and then it became a famous food in all the kosher delis. They would serve it with a sandwich and it's still, even till today, it's still served in most of the kosher delis. Um, okay, can a kosher pickle actually not be kosher? Does anyone know? So a lot of people think that kosher means that a rabbi said a blessing and then the food became kosher. That's actually not true. There's no blessing that is said in order to make something kosher. The way something becomes kosher is there a person, a rabbi or somebody that's knowledgeable in the kosher industry goes there and checks the ingredients and makes sure that everything is kosher. So if an ingredient used to make the pickles is not kosher, then the pickles would not be kosher. Okay, so we are gonna start. Everyone should have a recipe card in front of them. And on your table, you should have a bowl of garlic, already peeled garlic, a bowl of peppercorns. The peppercorns are darker. They're the black or dark, dark brown. And then the coriander seeds are a little bit lighter. So you notice the difference in color, the coriander seeds are a little bit lighter. Then you should have a bowl of kosher salt, a bowl with bay leaves, these are the bay leaves, and a bowl with dill. So we're gonna go through it step by step and I'll tell you exactly what to do. We're gonna be making our own pickling spice, basically. Instead of buying ready-made pickling spice, we're making it right now. Yes. Yeah. Kosher salt and, okay. So salt, the question. So 
Um, she asked what makes salt kosher. Salt is kosher because it's a natural ingredient. The reason why kosher salt is called kosher salt is because it's thicker and it was used for salting meat. It absorbed the blood. We, we try not to eat the blood from the meat, so it absorbs as much blood as possible after the animal is slaughtered. Right, so if you were, so in a pickle, most of the ingredients are kosher when you make your pickle, but sometimes people add like spicy jalapeno or they add other ingredients. If those other ingredients wouldn't be kosher, then the pickle wouldn't be kosher. So everything here today is pretty much spices or natural ingredients that would be kosher. Okay, so everybody can open their jar. So when you make this at home, you can use a mason jar. Today we're using plastic jars so that nothing breaks. So everybody can open their um, the pickles in front of them. And these are actually pickling cucumbers. You can use Persian or Kirby cucumbers to make pickles. These are called pickling cucumbers. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go through this step by step. Everybody open your jar, put it in front of you, and take four or five cloves of garlic and put it in your jar and uh, pass it around. So like, the order on the directions is a little bit wrong. I like to do the water last. So even though it says to do the water first, I like to save it till the end. Can everybody hear me? Okay, so pass around the garlic and put four or five cloves of garlic. If you like it a little bit more garlicky, you can put five. If you like it a little less, you can stick with the four. The next thing we're going to do is put the half a teaspoon of coriander seeds. Make sure you're using the coriander seeds and not the pepper. It's the lighter brown. Raise your hand if you did the garlic and you did the coriander seeds. Not yet? Okay. So we did the garlic and we did the coriander. Now we're going to do the peppercorn. So you can put a quarter teaspoon of peppercorn. The peppercorn is the dark, darker color, almost black. Raise your hand if you did the garlic and the coriander. So you can see the you can put the peppercorn, a quarter teaspoon of peppercorn. You did all three. Half coriander. Okay, we're going to wait a minute so that everybody can be on the same catch up on the same pace. We're doing, we did the garlic, the coriander, and the peppercorn. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is put the bay leaves. You can put two to four bay leaves. And the nice thing about pickles is if you put a little bit too much, it's not going to, it's just going to enhance the flavor. So you're not going to mess up. It's not like when you bake, you have to do the exact amount. Okay, so the next step is the kosher salt. You're going to put one to one and a half tablespoons of kosher salt. If you need to, if you're on a low sodium diet, you might want to put a little bit less salt. That's fine. It will still taste, it will still work. So you can put between one to one and a half tablespoons of kosher salt. And as soon as you have all your ingredients, you have your garlic, your coriander, your peppercorns, and your bay leaves, you can pour the water on top of the cucumbers. 
So you can fill up the um, jar with water. You want the cucumbers to be, you want the water to touch the top of the cucumbers. And then the dill is going to go on top of the water. The dill is going to be the last ingredient. It's going to be on top of the cucumbers. Raise your hand if you're missing any ingredients or you need something. What do you need? Pinky. 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 Yeah. Oh, she got it. Sorry. Okay, raise your hand if you need any ingredients or your table is missing anything. Okay, so after you put the salt, you can cover the cucumbers with water and pour water to the top of the cucumbers. And then cover your jar. When you cover the jar, you want to make sure that there's, you can try to take out as many air bubbles as possible. So you want to do a tight seal and try to make sure you let out all the air. Does anyone know what glot means? 
Glot means smooth. It means the lungs of the animal are smooth. And then on the bottom, there's just interesting little facts about kosher. Okay, so if you finish and you put all the ingredients in, give your jar a little shake so that the salt dissolves. Give yourself a pack for making pickles. And you can take this home. It will be ready in about three days. Uh, you can leave it out at room temperature on the counter in your kitchen. Um, once you open it, you should refrigerate it because it will start, it might start to bubble and spoil a little bit. So you can leave it out for three days, but if you want to test it on day two or you open it a little bit early, you need to put it in the fridge. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Anyone else have a question? Yeah.